All right, everyone, welcome back to Rocket League University. Today, we are going to be coaching a champ one by reviewing his replay. This was from some private scrims that we hosted. So the opponents, Otis and Quan, uh, one is a uh, mid plat. The other one is a grand champ one. Associate here is a uh, champ one, I believe. Diamond three or champ one. And uh, Zach is around the same area. So um, we're going to be coaching today and showing you guys how to get out of champ. So let's rewind and get started again. All right. So we'll start from this point here. Uh, this is my first thing I'm going to go over is the spacing here is pretty off. So uh, at this point, when a player is controlling, uh, we're not really all too helpful from back here. So we'll... As soon as you see this type of play where the ball is in the corner and you can understand that his car is not going to recover, right? He's in the air. There's really no way he can land and immediately make a play here. You can see we have associate all the way. That's what I'm just going to refer to him as in this video. Um, associate is all the way back here. He needs to be more. If he's got no boost, he needs to be trying to get this mid boost and holding Let's go to a more game like FOV. He needs to be holding this kind of position right here, right? And then what you're going to do is once you see Otis start to control the ball like this or whatever player it is, you need to move closer and you need to have about, um, I like to call it, uh, like think of the pitch as thirds, right? So where that blue dashed line is would be a third. Where that orange dashed line is is another third. And then the end wall is the final third. You always want to have the spacing to your teammate as one third of the pitch. As you can see here, or the field, whatever you want to call it. As you can see here, this is far more than one third spacing. So we are too far away in this situation. We should have prioritized grabbing the mid boost right at this point, right? This is what this stems from, is that when our teammate, where is he? There he is. So our teammate's going for a solo play right here. You don't want to be underneath him, right? This would be too close to him. You'd be underneath him. You want to have him at the top of your screen in this visual right here. And you need to be going about right here. This is where you should be in this type of situation. You should be right here. You're not going to jump up. You're not going to, you know, have two people flying in the air, especially if it's twos. Let him do his solo play. You're going to sit underneath him in this general area right here because we need to cover off this mid exit. So right here, if you were in this position, you would have been able to challenge. If you can't challenge here, you can always fake challenge, right? You can drive at him and then turn away and do something like this and collect this mid boost. If you can't challenge here and he ends up getting by you, let's say we fake challenge. We're going to go to what I was originally talking about and you're going to start shadowing him. So you're going to mimic his movements and we need to have about uh, five to 10 car links. So if you take about five to 10 car links, that would be, I don't know, somewhere around this range. And this is the position that you're gonna hold. You gotta make sure you're not gonna run into your teammate, right? Or teammates trying to rotate back, but you are going to hold that position and eventually take a 50. The sooner you can take the 50, the better. What we're going to discuss about 50s here, a quick little tip for all of my Rocket League players. This applies to any rank. You never want to 50 a ball in this orange and blue part of the field, right? You never want to 50 the ball on the ramp. The reason for that is it can pinch into your own net. It's very easy to pinch the ball into your own net from the ramp. So you always want to 50 players either on the ground like this, on ground level, or when they have completely made it up the wall. Never on the ramp, okay? Now that we've got that out of the way, that's my first critique. He should have been there to challenge that ball in middle. So again, we'll take a look at this, right? He's very, very far away. This is just, this spacing is just far too distant. I'm not trying to be a mean coach. I'm just trying to be a helpful coach. You're not helpful from being back here, right? The, the, and the easiest way to explain this is you're basically just useless by sitting all the way back here. You have no contribution to the play. So you need to be more involved in the play and keep that gap closer. Five to ten car lengths, as we discussed. I showed you what that distance looks like. All right, so he ends up going for the challenge here. Um, the actual challenge itself is good, 
right? This is a good challenge because you're able to get it over. But the way that the challenge happened and the positioning of how that got led up to that point, that's what I'm talking about of that was uh, not good. So again, we can actually see our teammate here has the same exact issue far too back. And so I'm going to probably say this is a common theme for this type of rank where players are just not involved in the play enough. So you can see he already has 100 boosts. So he's going back. Or, sorry, that was a bug in the replay, actually. So, bug in the replay. He's got no boost here. So, he's going to pick up this 100. But, um, you know, the the awareness of what's going on just isn't there. Especially when you turn the ball cam off. Um, like you can see, uh, we'll go back to Connor in a... Or, we'll go back to Associate in a second here. But I want to point this out. The awareness of when he's turning ball cam off actually contributes a lot to being out of position. Because... He turns it off as soon as the challenge is about to happen. So how are you supposed to tell where the ball goes if you're not even looking at it, right? So you need to t you need to keep the ball cam on while the challenge is happening and then turn it off very quickly to see where you're going. That's my little critique there. Anyways, let's move on from that point. Let's go here. Let's see what happens. So again, uh, one thing I don't like about this play right here is that our associate friend doesn't check where his teammate is at all during the sequence, right? Never turns off ball cam. Never looks with the right stick to see where anybody is right he's just kind of focused on the ball at this point right here you should take the right stick and you should flick it to the right and the reason for that is if you can flick it to the right you know you just as you're flying on here just flick the stick to the right take a quick look at where everyone else is and then go back and continue making the play that way you at least have some information before you just bl blindly throw the ball at the wall because especially in twos, if your teammate isn't mid with you, what is the point of making this play right here, right? You're just giving the ball away. So in my opinion, what I would do here is as this ball is about to land, I would drive under it and you see that your teammate's not with you. I would catch it and I would control in the corner here. Try and see if you can stall a little bit for your teammate to push up. And I guess... The biggest thing is you want to retain possession of the ball, right? You don't need to give up the ball in this situation. You know, you're not really going to score from... You could score from this spot if you wanted to. There is an angle there, and I'll show you what that angle is. As you beat him, you can see you have this angle here. So there... And you're pretty full on boost anyways. So as you make this 50, we'll try and time it. Bam. You make this 50. If you can use that boost to get yourself in this angle, you actually do have a scoring chance because the orange team is very out of position here. But if you can't do that, do what I said again, which is control it in the corner, retain possession. You don't have to give the ball away if nobody's pressuring you. And that's something I see with a lot of players in this rank is they tend to hit the ball away when they don't have to. So uh, good challenge on the wall here. Um, our teammate is a little far back. Not really much we can do about that. He ends up making a good challenge, and we push up here, and this is something I have to discuss for sure. I can see the indecisiveness in this entire play, right? You can see he doesn't know if he should go. He doesn't know when the other person is going to challenge. He doesn't know to go or not to go right here. In Rocket League, if you're going to be a good player, you have to make up your mind. You're going to learn as you go when the times not to go are, but you have to be decisive with your decisions. You're either going to go or you're not going to go. There's no in-between. And this is a perfect example of what in-between looks like. You can see the stop boosting, the braking, the gas, the braking again. He's not sure when to go. You have to make up your mind of when you're going to go, and you just have to commit to it because this would have actually been a very good scoring chance. So right here... Uh, if you just continue boosting, you use all your boost, you would be in this situation. You probably would have been here by now or maybe even beat him. And I'm going to show you why this is a good play, because from their perspective, he is completely blind to where you are. See, he can only see our teammate Zach. He has no idea where you are. If you were coming full speed, it would have been at the very last second and he would have had absolutely no idea you were there. He would have been blindsided by you. So uh, that's a, definitely a critique for that play. Got to be more involved in the play and more decisive, I would say. All right, off the kickoff here, uh, we do a little soft cheat, which is fine. Pick up that boost. Um, definitely. Okay, yeah, this is a major problem right here. Major, major problem. Um, 
in order to get out of champ and get to higher ranks, you need to understand where to defend. And this is how you're going to defend this shot. Anything that's in the air, you defend by using the back wall. Anything that's on the ground, you defend by staying on the ground. So right here in this situation, uh, you decide to stay on the ground. You really, you should have been already at this spacing by now. You should be hugging this corner. If he places this bottom left, like in this region over here, that's just a good shot, right? This is a tough position to be in. That's just a good shot. Good players are going to make those shots. But he actually gets a really bad shot here. It's not a very good shot at all. And that means it's easily savable for us. But because we're out of position and we're on the ground, instead of being on the back wall here, it ends up going in. So if you are in this position again where you go off the kickoff, right? Especially these balls that roll like this, like crazy and pop out middle. You need to pick up this boost. So, you know, you see that you should boost to this and flip, try and get here as fast as possible. Pick up this boost, turn ball cam on again so you can see where you are and bam, you should be holding this right here. Hold this right here. You can see that would have been a very easy save for us and make sure when you clear that, that you put it into this corner over here, right? We don't want to clear that out middle. We want to clear it into the corners or towards our teammates direction. Okay. We're not at the speed flipping era yet of rocket league you can see we're still boosting straight at the ball so we definitely need to work on those speed flips and get used to that because uh you're gonna have to know how to do that later on um but when you hit the ball on the kickoff make sure you're striking the middle of the ball i noticed that you're just driving kind of straight at it like this and that is going to force the ball either way out to the side or way out this way and doesn't allow for a lot of control Make sure when we're boosting at this right here, you want to turn your car a little bit and you want to strike the center of the ball and you want to either hold left flip or right flip completely. I'm talking 90, 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right. Those are the best ways to take kickoffs. You'll notice you'll win a lot more kickoffs if you do that. All right. So uh, right here. This is a little interesting. Good save. Way to be there. Um, I would have preferred maybe a mid-boost grab or something like that, but it's fine. And the reason I would have preferred that is because now you can see you're stuck on zero. Look at all these pennies that you miss, by the way, right here. So you grab this one, and this is a good challenge here. You get that one right there, but... Even though Zach is going that direction, I would say pick up those pennies. You know, this is like, you could have 48 boosts here. Take this one, take this one, take this one. Even then, the mid boost was there. Instead, you go for the mid boost, and it ends up being a goal. But um, at a higher level, you're not going to have that much time to make decisions and make plays. At a higher level, you need to challenge this ball immediately and put Otis under pressure. So I would take all those pennies that are on the right. I wouldn't go for the bid boost here in this type of situation. But the only reason I'm saying that is because it's a two on one, right? You're in a two on one situation. You just pulled a defender out of the play and you ha now have o Otis outnumbered and you need to capitalize off of that at higher levels. Um, going for mid boosts and not capitalizing off the man advantage is, uh, is, is going to come back to bite you, especially if players are looking for demos on rotations. Anyways, we end up getting a goal out of this one, which is a, a good shot on that. So we can watch that shot again, you know, good contact with the ball, good placement. All is good there for the shot. All right. This is a good kickoff. Um, this is a little nitpicky, but I want you to be the best player you can possibly be. So I'm going to get very nitpicky. Use this boost. You just picked up 12 boosts. Use it to get to the mid boost. You'll get there half a second faster. Instead, you decide not to use it and you go for a burger flip. <laughs> um, definitely, we got to, as you're ranking up, you got to eliminate the burger flips out of your game. The burger flips, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, are those. Those full front flips and full back flips. Higher level players... They don't do that stuff. Higher level players, it's all diagonal flips. It's all speed flips, all right? So my advice to you, work on getting rid of the burger flips. We don't want any of that. Good boost pickup there, though. Uh, I just wish you would have used the 12 to get to the mid boost. Um, holding position on the wall. This, um, I would just prefer that you hold this at a different angle. I just don't like the angle you're holding this at. Um, so... 
what I mean by that is there you are, you're right there. And now once you recover, you should be holding like this, like being ready to drive up the wall because it's very common that people are going to chip the ball up the wall and it's not very common that they're going to go out here like that. So you can see that's exactly what he does. And you would have been driving up the wall already to make a play on that. So um, that's a small critique, but definitely something I would highlight. Um, but this is a good 50 here. You chose the right side, which is a good 50. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of how you rotate back here because there's high potential that you're going to crash into your teammate by doing this. The ball's already on the wall. A, a better player is going to be on the wall to shoot this already. So if you decide that you're going to rotate, if we can get to the fly cam here, sorry. Um, if you decide that you're going to rotate, you need to stay on the ground and you need to rotate out this way and get yourself out of there and out of the way because you've made it now harder for your teammate to hit the ball because now he has three name tags to worry about instead of two, right? So uh, definitely a little detail there that I would highly recommend. We want to rotate out wider. Um, again, this is a spacing issue. This is actually a very scorable chance. I know you can't tell what boost they have when you're playing the game. Right now, they're very low boost. A good player is going to capitalize off of this all day. Again, our spacing is just too far back. We need to be much closer. We need to be more in this region over here. So as soon as you see, um, so like let's say we're rotating back. We turn ball cam off just to see. As soon as we see our teammate go for it, you should curl back right here. You got two pennies that you can take right here. This will get you to 24 boost. That's more than enough to make a shot, right? And that would keep you in this region. You can see the goalie was very slow to that. And look at this little pocket that you've got right in here to make a shot. So definitely one of your biggest issues is not being involved in the play enough. Um, you do challenge here. And uh, this is kind of just a mechanical misfire here. That's why this doesn't go in. So um, the biggest thing I would say here is that you need to tap the brakes to get behind the ball. You're parallel with the ball. You need to be behind the ball. So you need to set your car up for a better angle for this shot, and you need to hold the left stick to the left so you do a side dodge. But it kind of just looks like you miss flip. That's fine. The mechanical stuff will get better as time goes. I don't like this challenge at all. There's no reason to make this challenge like this. All right. So the reason this is a bad challenge is because it's exactly what we went over in the beginning of the video. You never challenge the ball on the ramp, right? You just 50 the ball into the ramp, which now leads it to go outwards. And I can see in the timeline, this actually ends up being a goal. So that all stemmed from you making a bad 50 here. So how do you counter that? Your 50 is right here, actually. Your 50 is in this region, and you need to single jump 50. Okay, you need to take a low single jump 50 here. And that's because... He doesn't have a lot of speed. If he has a lot of speed, you don't take this 50 because it's going to pinch back. He's got no speed. So you actually, you should have challenged us like right here. Instead, you give him all of this real estate, right? And that leads to a terrible 50. And I love what Quan actually does here is that he's controlling the ball. He's keeping it very close to him. This is an excellent play. This is what I mean by retaining possession. No reason to give up the ball if you don't have to. He baits you into a bad 50, right? And so you take that bad 50, especially the way that you uh, place your car here. If we go to fly cam, I'll show you how you should have done this. So let's just say you miss that challenge right there. What you need to do is you need to rotate out this direction. So your car is out over here. And as he's driving it, you need to challenge him head on. You can see in the replay, look at your car. It's completely sideways by the time you challenge him. That's not good enough. You need to challenge right here. Challenge him head on and flip yourself either to the left or into the wall. Okay, so that's why this ends up being a goal uh, was because of that bad 50. We're not gonna go over the uh, the whole save situation there. All right, we're gonna take this corner boost. This is good. Uh, I like the possession here, very nice. Um, okay, this is there's a lot of panic. <laughs> a lot of panic when we have time and space. Uh, this ends up being a goal, I can see. Um, but this you could have made this much easier for yourself, but I am going to play it out. All right, so it's good bump off the back wall. It's good pressure. Especially, um, I'm not sure what Otis is doing here, 
I'm not sure why he doesn't challenge that and why he doesn't take that 100 boost. So uh, everybody can learn something from this here. You can see he's got 78 boost. Uh, he doesn't challenge this ball. So now he gives you a ton of space for um, seemingly no reason. Could have very well challenged that. And he decides not to take the 100 boost either, which now puts you in an adv advantageous position, right? So what that means is uh, the reason I'm teaching this one, you have to get players off the ball. You can't give players this much time and space. It's just not a good decision to make. And second of all, you need to steal players' boosts so that they run out of momentum. And you can see he just completely forfeits the boost to associate here, which allows this play to end up even becoming something. Because if we take a look, like look at this, you would have had, let's see, 29 boosts. You can't really do all that much with 29 boosts. Instead, now you give him 100 boosts, Look, now the, now the possibilities are endless with the way you can do it, right? So um, it's good that you capitalize off of that and you end up making a good play. I like the bump off the back wall here. But what I was going to say and why this is so important is you could have made this much easier for yourself. And I have coached you before and I've told you about this. So I'm going to remind you, attack the middle of the field. Stop attacking from the walls. And especially in this situation, just slow the ball down a little bit and get yourself on this side of the ball and cut it cut in get it on top of your car now you put him in a terrible spot right if you're ready to flick this or air dribble bump him or you know any type of air dribble from this position so dangerous so hard to defend now i know you're in champ one whatever that's a hard play to do but air dribble bumps are very easy to do they're they're not very challenging and you know air dribbles i know how good you are so i know that you're capable of learning that type of stuff so um definitely i would say that's something to work on here. Um, this is a decent rotation. I would have preferred you take a little bit of a different route. Um, I'm just not a fan of players drive. Like, I understand there's these boost pads here, and that'll get you up to 36 or something. But why not get 36 going this direction and put yourself in a much better spot, right? It's way harder to save a ball from going down the middle of the field and having to turn your car around like this than doing the much easier play which is you get your 36 boost and now you're parallel with the goal line and you can defend from this position over here right because look at this instead of you just force a hit out right and you turn the ball over to them instead of that otis turns away you would have been here otis turns away right there you can catch this thing catch this ball and now you got full possession um, a lot of what I teach in Rocket League, right, is that we don't want to give the ball away if we don't have to. And this uh, luckily ends up not being anything. They don't really capitalize off of it. But the whole point was you could have had possession here, but instead you decide to give it away. You want to, especially in twos, you want to retain possession of the ball as much as you can. Keep it close to you as much as you can. You don't want to give it away if you don't have to. All right, uh, let's take a look at that. Uh... This play right here, again, same thing, right? We want to keep the ball close to us. There's no threat, right? There's no threat right here. You can see he literally just turned away. So why fire it into the corner and give it away to them again and let them do the same thing again, right? Keep it close to you. Especially if they're backing off like that. Look at how far away they are. Keep it close to you. No, no reason to hit this off to the corner. Okay, good save here. Uh, what I don't like, though, is um, I get that it's hard at this rank. It's not really the same thing. If this were me, I kind of would have risked it for the mid boost, and I would have put the trust in my teammate to make the save. I understand at the champ one level, it's not that easy, so I don't really recommend that for you yet, but it's something to think about for the future because uh, the reason I said that is look where the ball ends up. It ends up by the mid boost anyways, so you would have been right there. This is good. I think you just need to be more aware here. Um, but every player plays with different volumes on and whatnot. But the way I look at it is, especially in this situation right here, I see that there's two orange cars. Now I see that there's only one orange car. He's not on the right side of my screen, so he's not rotating back to the right, which means he must be rotating back to the left. And in my head, that would set off a timer of, okay, I'm going to get demoed here because I don't see him anywhere else on my screen, so he's got to be behind me. So I would just be very aware of that next time you're dribbling the ball slowly down the field. If you don't see cars in front of you, then they're definitely behind you. 
the same kind of thing happens again, right? You see, you see one car in front of you and you put yourself in a position to get demoed, right? So you end up putting yourself in a position to get demoed. Now our teammate hits a nice shot here, which is good, but this could have been made much easier, which is, um, Otis is right there and he goes for the demo. You should be following this play up. You should be like right here at this point, right? Because you're going to be the backup guy. If this ball goes middle, you should be right in this region right here. Because look at how discombobulated they are, right? This is a very bad rotation from orange. So you could capitalize off of this all day. Okay. So you get dusted on the kickoff here. Um, <laughs> you will pretty much get dusted every single time. If you do this on the kickoff, which is, uh, there's some odd little wave dash thing going on here. What you need to do is a, uh, you need to, I know I'm naming mechanical things, but I know how good players are at this rank. I know you're capable of doing this, right? You need to do a diagonal flip right as soon as the kickoff starts and you need to land somewhere in this region and you need to just hover around right here, right? And I could show you why. So I'll show you the speed that this would have been done at. Bam. I would have been right here already, right here. And now it's up to you to be able to get there and beat the other guy or at least take a good 50 this is a terrible 50 you don't even flip right so the reason this is a bad 50 is because look at what you're 50 -ing. you're 50 -ing the bottom half of the ball when the opponent has completely jumped right that's never going to work so if you're going to 50 somebody at high speed you have to double jump into the ball you can only 50 um low if you're going at a lower speed right so somehow they don't score off of this i'm not sure how that happens so we have a miss there and it's a good recovery to keep that out um okay again your plays are a little slow but i understand because you're a newer player right this is the indecisiveness i'm talking about if you're gonna go for this mid boost just or this corner boost just go for it don't even think about it you're gonna learn eventually what the timing is of when i should be going for boost and when i should not be going for boost the indecisiveness is what kills players. So you got to make up your mind. I'm either going for the boost or I'm not going. In this sense, you kind of had a little bit of indecisiveness and it puts you in this bad spot, which ends up getting a really bad clear. Luckily, uh, they don't capitalize off of it, but I like the fact that you kind of recover and you grab the boost here. Good 50. Okay, um, this is fine. I think you could have... Okay, I would like to see you boost and flip at the same time and try and keep up with his ball stay in this region right here right this is about as fast as the car can go as my camera was going so look at where you would have been you would have been right behind him and that really pressures him and then you know you can go out this way and then pick up your boost and let zach take care of it right so um i'm just noticing a lot of the same problem of you're not involved in the play <clears throat> Like, I think what's going to make you a better player is just being more active. <clears throat> like, you you need to be involved more and in doing more on the field if you're going to rank up. And I think the biggest thing is that you're just too far back. You're not, you're not involved enough and you're, like, unsure of when you should be going and when not to go. Almost like you're overthinking the game, in a sense. So, I think you should just go. Like, you should just go and just stop getting yourself caught out in midfield and so far back between everybody. And that's why this goal actually ends up evening, even happening is because you don't pressure him, right? We make this odd little play here. So right here, um, I would fake challenge this all day, all day. So I would have been like right here. I would have stayed right under him. You can even bump him off the ball if you want. Like that's a huge thing in Rocket League in order to defend these shots. Just get people off of the ball, get their car off of the ball. And so right here, if you wanted to, you could have done that. You could have just like driven straight up and bumped him. Or if you find like that's not going to end in a good result, you can drive here and you can just fake challenge this. Rotate out, pick up some pennies. You'll be at 70, 80 boost by doing that. And you can just sit right here, right? Your teammate gets a bad 50, but look, you would have been there to shut all this down. He's got no boost. He can't have infinite boost, right? So he's going to run out eventually. And you would have been there to shut that down instead what I also don't like about this is look at how much boost you have. You take the mid boost, you have the 100, and then you decide to leave him and give him all the space. You just let him have a free opportunity. 
as soon as you see someone like desperately flipping like this right here as soon as you see like this type of desperate flipping that's when you need to close that gap and you need to be right here you need to be shutting this down immediately you got to be staying in front of him making sure there's no way he's going to get this ball by you right because look at all the real estate you're giving him by sitting back there right that, that's a that's a tough spot to put yourself in you need to be much closer in shutting this down um so again i would have been like right here and i would have been right here and bam i would have challenged it at this point right and keep everything try to challenge it in a way so that it goes out in this direction or goes towards the wall we don't want to challenge it so that it goes backwards out here all right so that that is honestly the whole reason why this goal happens if for whatever reason you need to rotate out of here you feel like you can't make this save again your route is what screws you over so you do this kind of goofy little turn right in here this drift turn and again we already went over this in the video but it's a reason why you're giving up goals you're turning in the middle of the net you just turned in the middle of the net right so that just put you in a really bad angle that put you over here if you're going to rotate out you need to be you need to be taking this angle like we discussed bam right here look at how much easier this save is from right here so much easier you would have been already here you would have already have challenged it and already cleared it right so those are just small little details small little things that you need to um, be aware of when you're playing the game that are going to help you get better uh, let's take a look at the kickoff here can so better kickoff but as we discussed uh and i'm gonna put my i'm putting my foot down smacking the court hammer right here order in court no more burger flips in your game the next time i play with you i don't ever want to see a burger flip again right get rid of this stuff get rid of the burger flips that, that's on, only bad players make burger flips i can see you did it again there there you go diagonal flips that's what we want to see Again, more indecisiveness. What the hell is that touch? <laughs> what the heck is that? All right, you're better than that. I know that. I know that for sure. You are 10 times better than that. So let's go over why this happened. You should already be aerialing for this. If you're, you know, if you have SSL dreams and whatnot, and you want to be a good player, you got to already be aerial and aerial. I can't even say that. You got to already be up in the air for this thing, right? Up in the air, right? And try and aerial it so that it lands in right here you don't want to aerial it and have it hit the wall like this and bounce down you don't want to aerial it so that it hits the the ground and then bounces off the wall you want to aerial it so that it rolls right here and rolls up the wall that's a very safe clear to make if you feel like you can't aerial that and you can't get to it um one of my biggest problems i'm noticing with you is it feels like you don't know when other players have boost and when they don't so you know you can see otis is going right he just used a bunch of boost there which means he's low so he's he's really not going to be able to do much and so from here um you want to challenge this ball i like the fact that you challenge this ball but the placement and the way you angle your car is all off and the indecisiveness right I can see you moving your car left and right. You don't know when to go and whatnot. That all stems back to our original theme. You're either going to go or you're not going to go, right? And so I would have, you know, maybe at this height is when I would have challenged the ball. And you want to hit it. You want to hit it like this. It, it, this specific ball is how I would hit this. I would aerial and... Again, you, you hit the bottom half of it and you, you kind of out of control of your car. I would aerial right now and I would strike the ball and I would try try and hit it upwards, honestly. I would hit it upwards and in the corner because that's going to launch the ball like this over midfield. And that, you know, I know these players, they're not going to be able to hit those type of aerials back towards you. So just something to think about. It's why this happens. We get very lucky, and this ends up rolling up the wall here. I like the fact that you steal that boost. Um, so you end up taking control of this, but could have been made much easier. Uh, you're just very out of control here. Very out of control. So I would recommend stop using so much boost when you're trying to carry the ball on top of your car and modulate the throttle a little better. You're like, it looks like you're on a hundred percent throttle and then you're zero percent, hundred percent, zero percent. Try and get it to like flutter between like 25, 50% percent 
throttle and feather the boost little taps of the boost you don't need to be using so much of it at once like you just use like 30 in you know a whole second here no reason to do that a little more calm a little more collected with the the boost and the throttle and you'll notice it's much easier to match the speed of the ball and carry it on your car like that okay this is very dangerous the way you put yourself here right here you need to commit so this is our thing like our spacing is a little off and we talked about that but your decision making is also um like when you decide you're going to do something you have to do that thing instantly so in here i would decide well i'm low on boost right i saw that you were low on boost you're 30 boost okay i'm going for this mid boost i need to get there as fast as i possibly can Rocket League is all about being in the right place at the right time and getting to those places as quickly as you can. You don't want to waste any time, right? That's probably why you get scored on with a lot of open nets is for that reason. And so right here, bam, I would pick this up and I'd be right back here. I'd be right ready to receive this pass and I'd land under this ball. I'd catch it and go up the wall because you need to be able to read what's happening a little quicker and I actually think you can because I've played with you. I think you can read these plays quicker. I think you are reading them. You just need to make your actions quicker. So the thoughts are there. You know what to do. It's just that you need to do it faster. So bam, right there. I know you want to grab boost here. I know it. I know the type of player you are. I know you want to grab boost here. You got to go for it. Use all of the boosts that you have. The all 32 that you have to pick up that boost. Get out of there, right? So you should have used all that boost. You would have already had 100 by now, and you would have already been at like half field. I've played this game for six, seven, eight years. I don't know how long now. I played it since the day it came out. I know exactly where this ball is going. It's either going on net or it's going towards this corner, and you would have already been here. All right, this is a good ch this is a good challenge here, but where you hit the ball is not a good challenge. So you just got to get your Especially when you're clearing the ball on defense, if you're going to hit it outwards like this and not roll it up the wall, you need to strike the bottom of the ball more. You need to hit it right where that light is. You see that that uh, the light that's being applied on it? You need to strike it right there, right in that region, right there, right? No more hitting it over here. That's only if you want to hit the ball down. No more hitting it straight up like this. Like, that's just no good for anybody. You want to hit it right where this white pocket is, right in here, right? And that's going to launch the ball upwards and clear it better. Instead, you hit it straight from the bottom. You Like, you literally hit it straight up. Imagine if you were kicking a soccer ball, like, you would kick it straight up in the air. You want to clear it outwards. Like, soccer goalies in a soccer game, they don't clear the ball straight up in the air in their own net, right? They clear it outwards. It arcs outwards. So, again, uh, one thing I don't like about this play is you, you actually don't check where anyone is. I think I want to see you do a little more of that as you continue to grow as a Rocket League player. I want to see you turn ball cam off a little more and use the right stick more to check where people are because that's information for you on the field that's information of where people are that that's going to help you figure out what's going on a little better um and so that, that that's a major major critique i have from you again why don't we pick up this mid boost as well right spawns right there you just saw it spawn there's no way there's absolutely no way anyone is scoring from their goal right there right there's no threat here that's a huge thing about Rocket League and understanding how to become a better player is what offensive and defensive threats are. Right here, this is a threat, right? That's a threat. You need to return, which you do. That awesome job there. This is not a threat. There is no threat here. Nobody can score from this position, right? No one's going to score from here. We're not playing against freaking first killer. He's not going to psycho it off the backboard and end up in your own net. So as soon as you see this boost spawn, turn around and go grab it. You're zero boost anyways. You're already over there. It doesn't matter. Instead, we're kind of just driving around, and this is, again, the recurring theme. We're not involved in the play. We're not doing anything by being in the middle here, right? We're not active. We're not helping anybody out. We're not defending anybody. We're 12 boosts in the middle of the field. It, it's not a viable option to, to be doing this. And again, I know it may sound like I'm being rude, but I'm, I'm actually I'm trying to be um, critical in a way that's like very direct because I, I want the players watching this video to learn. I don't want to have fluff and be like, oh, this is good. This is great. This is great. You know, we're here to learn. We're here to get better as Rocket League players. You got to be critical if you're going to do that, right? 
So that's why I'm saying that. That's why I'm saying you're pretty much useless in this situation by not picking up that mid boost because what are you going to do with 24 boost over here or 12, whatever you have? You can't really do anything with 12 boost in midfield. You never want to be in the middle of the field with no boost, right? That's just pretty much a death sentence. And you can see what ends up happening, right? You end up putting yourself in a really bad spot here. So instead of what would have been, you would have had 100 boost here. You could have easily made a play and done something helpful. Instead, we're zero boost and now we're caught back, right? So definitely make it a priority. If you're near that boost, you just happen to be near it, you got to go pick it up. Do not like this play from the blue octane here. Uh, you never want to do this in twos, especially now that you can see your teammates boost. If you ever see your teammates low on boost or your teammate is very close to you in twos, don't ever slam the ball off the backboard like this. Don't ever do that, right? It, that's never a good play to make. You always want to take a low 50 here. So you should not be diving in here. You should be like creeping up, right? Creeping up and you should take a single jump low 50 right here, right? That's going to keep the ball in the corner and not going to launch it backwards. Instead, it launches it backwards and now we're in a very awkward position here. We do the, the right play in catching it, right? That's the right play to make. We're a little out of control, but that's mechanical stuff. You'll get better at that as we go on. Um, again, uh, I know he's not the main focus of the video, but I just want to teach some things to you guys. Possession is very important in twos, and you always want to make some, tor some sort of like an air dribble or a bump here. Don't ever just shoot the ball on net from half field. The probability of you scoring from half field here is like probably less than 10%. So take the high percentage play. That's how you rank up is by making high percentage plays. And a high percentage play here is like an air dribble or an air dribble bump or a flick. Never just rolling it towards the net. So um, again, this goes back to the theme of our video and probably why you're losing a lot of games. Not, not you not the person I'm reviewing, but just in general, why the you watching this video are probably losing a lot of games is because you give the ball away for no reason. This is a great example of that. You're just giving the ball to the other team for no reason. So um, it actually ends up leading to a goal here in a second. Um, and so unfortunately, um, I would just say, uh, especially right here, again, this all stems from not being useful on the field by prioritizing sitting in the middle of the field, right? It's never a good place. It's a good place to be if you have boost. Like if you're 100 boost, mid mid is always a great place to be. Midfield is a good spot to be in. If you don't have boost, you're not helpful in the middle of the field. You can't really do anything with zero boost in the middle of the field, so there's no reason to be there. You have to prioritize rotating and getting boost here. So as soon as you see this going down like this, it's very difficult for a player to score from their own net like that. You should have already at this point been over here on this mid boost and you would have been in this position and you would have had to defend what is a very difficult two on one, but it makes a lot greater of a chance that you're going to save this as opposed to taking this really bad 50, which puts your teammate in an awkward spot. Granted, they don't do the best job at rotating to save it. But that's not really the point. The point is, you know, even the 50 isn't great either. There's, there's a reason why this ends up in your net, and it's because this 50 is, uh, for lack of a better term, atrocious, right? It's honestly probably better off that you fake challenge this and don't 50 it as opposed to 50ing this. Um, at least that's the way that I would do it because it's just going to fly back into your own net, right? You only have 20 boosts, so... Um, yeah, I would say that's about it for this video. I think I got pretty much every point that I want to get to you um, in this one. Um, so again, a bigger view, we got to be more involved in the play, right? We got to make it a priority to get boost. We've got to get to spots on the field quicker and wow, that was a brutal miss. Um, <laughs> anyways, we've got to get to spots on the field quicker. We got to make our decisions and stick to them. So if you decide you're going to go, you're going to go, right? You're not going to turn around and try and figure out when you should go. You're either going to go or you're not going to go. And lastly, I would say, I don't know if it's like exactly the way to do it, but you should just trust yourself a little more. Um, trust yourself to be, a, be able to make plays a little bit more. I want to see you be a little more confident on the field, a little more assertive, a little more like I can make plays. I can, I can do good 
things with the ball, right? I can make good air dribbles. I can take good shots. I want to see more of that from you. Your gameplay looks timid to me. That's the way I see it, is that you're not very sure on what you should be doing. And I want to see, like, good Rocket League players, they know what they're doing, right? You know, they don't always plan everything out, but they're assertive on the field. They're in your face all the time. They're annoying. They're hard to play against. And that's what I want to see you kind of become is I because I know you've played against me before and playing against me is very annoying I know that so um, that's why I want to replicate that is because you know I learned that from playing against pros they're incredibly annoying to play against it's like you can never breathe when you're playing against them and it's the same thing I want to see from you I want you to be a little bit more in their face more active more involved in the play make your decisions quicker and um, stop being so far back. I would say that's the biggest thing. Your spacing of your teammates, you're just too far back uh, a lot of the time, and uh, you're no help when you're too far back with 12 boosts, right? So let's pick up some some boosts, some pennies. Um, it doesn't always have to be the 100 boosts. You can pick up the, pen the pennies, prioritize the pennies, and let's be more involved in the play. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to subscribe and uh, we'll keep reviewing some replays. Catch you in the next one.